Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets in our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. Nasty hearties, and welcome once again to Full Stream Ahead. I be your Captain Charlie, the Professor Esser. And with me, as always, is me first mate and skinny rich friend. It's Moz. Welcome, Moz. So glad you're here. So glad to have you back in a world, in a galaxy far, far away. A galaxy of capes and lunatics of gods and monsters. There is a galactic empire. That needs people to fight against it. One such man. Maybe Cassie and Andor. Or maybe not. Andor, Season 1, Episode 6, The Eye. With the cover of a spectacular local festival, the Altani mission reaches a point of no return. Our director this week is Susanna White. Um, writers this week, let's see here. We got uh, a written by credit for good old Dan Gilroy. Tony Gilroy, I wonder if they're related, gets the created by credit. George Lucas, well, he just says this is all based on Star Wars. Uh, and that's what we got, uh, our team. Uh, Maz, this was a good episode. Um, this was, I, I was, you know, I love a good heist. And this was a good heist. This was a good heist. And this wasn't the kind of good heist where it's like, oh, no, it was all misdirect and this was all the plan all along. No, this is a heist that goes to plan but still goes a little wrong. Um, and really, I think we spend the whole episode here on Aldana. I don't think we really get off to check on any of the other folks, do we? Yeah, I think we get a little bit of Luthen and Mon Mothma in this one. We do get a little okay. I, you know, I barely remember them. If you remember them, you yeah, can. There, there, there wasn't very much. It was more of this, like you know, moving stuff along. Uh, nothing revelatory. Nothing terribly uh, interesting. Yeah, I remember at the very end we get Luthen right. when he hears about the uh, about the big heist. You know, um, which is what well, this is. This is a big, big heist, and. Um, isn't he sort of like intermittently waiting for news about it and is really stressed about it? And the secretary has to keep mm-hmm. calming him down. There was like little tidbits, but I don't, I don't know if it was yeah. very significant. Most of it was spent on them sneaking away. Yeah. With, did they not? Did they, did they not realize how much money was going to be in there? It's like they went there. And they brought like their little satchels and pocketbooks to sneak away. It's like, did you not understand? What you were no, 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 no. They knew. That's why they they, they, they knew they were taking the ship. Uh, they just knew they had to do a lot of moving really quickly. And it was, you know, and they basically, I, I really feel they had always intended to impress the, uh, the, um, crew hmm. into it. You know, that, that was always part of the deal that we're going but to yeah. have to yeah. hold these guys at gunpoint and make them, make them do the work. Yeah. Because that's a lot. Of money and not for nothing, you know. Say what you will for paper money, it moves easy. Um, <laughs> Imperial credits. This is like coins, and I don't know, man. Part of me wonders, like, is, are those coins even really necessary? I, I guess maybe it's like just. I guess maybe the entire argument is it's just all anti counterfeit uh, right. protections. That basically, it's like you know, it really, it's still. It's arguably still just, you know, paper, but that 
it would be almost impossible to replicate because of all of the heaviness and, and the weight and the electronics in it. Because I, I have to assume there's some sort of like data in there somewhere. I don't know, but it just. I, know. I wonder if, if, you know, there, there's certain things in this universe you're like, okay, they went down a different evolutionary path and they solved this particular problem in a different way. So they yeah. never encountered this invention that we take for granted every day. So maybe they happened upon digital currency. Um, and they found it to be flawed inherently somehow. And they said, no, 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 it's too easy to hack. It's too easy to steal. It's too easy to scam. We're going to do away with it. Physical stuff you can touch, that's going to be currency. Or they never happened upon that uh, invention at all. Yeah, I mean, what's interesting is that it does seem that they do have some kind of digital currency. Because we never see, you know, bounty hunters carrying around these big rolls of, of money, you know? Yeah. So it does seem like there is some kind of... Like credit cards, or does it just work on reputation? Ah, I'll get you next Friday. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I see that, but that's the thing. That, that's the question, because there does seem to be an electronic form of currency that they do trade that are called credits. Hmm. And then there are these imperial credits that we do see people throw down. Yeah. So like, there's many times people will throw down pieces of, of, of chips that are imperial credits. And I guess maybe it's like like Bitcoin, where you can have your Bitcoin on a drive. Right. And, you know, that is your Bitcoin. Or you can have your Bitcoin just in the ether and you can transfer it that way, you know. And I, I, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's how the imperial credit system works is that what? Oh, you're talking to mom? Okay. Um, uh, I think the cell might, might have gone bad. Yeah. So. You don't see it in there. It's probably because it had to be removed. But I mean, it's like, yes. yeah, yeah, the plan doesn't go off without a hitch. But what plan does? And that's exactly what Cassian was was trying to tell everybody before. Is like, listen, you you bunch of children. You, have you never done this before? Calm down. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. And that's the thing. And actually, I do like the opening with with uh, oh, our sweet little our sweet little pumpkin baby, and he's just. You know, our poet, our poet, who we oh, love. Nemec, Nemec, I think. Nemec, something like that. Yeah, he is, he is, he is, he's all jazzed up on, on the, on the heist, man. And, you know, and, 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 and Cassian is really trying to, you know, calm him down. And I really feel it's interesting to me hmm. as the story progresses, how that one character became the, like, the mascot of the group. You know, a, a very important mascot, though, because you see, he has a job and he is freaking good at his job. Um, you know, because he's he's actually the navigator, and I do appreciate that. I do love that, and um, I do like when we go into this. I also found it very interesting because this is where we get the reveal that uh, the one guy, the the you know the the big. You know, not the, not the, um, imperial, uh, major, but the one guy in the rebel factions is actually a former stormtrooper. Mm, right. And I thought, oh, wow, that is, that is cool. That is very interesting within, <coughs> they've done that a lot. Oh, okay. Tristan says they do that a lot, that ex stormtroopers wind up in the rebellion all the time. Which yeah, makes sense. You can get them to take their helmet off. Their aim improves like a thousandfold. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm going to say this once again about the poor stormtroopers. When they're shooting, the, the only time you actually see them missing is when they're shooting at Luke and Leia, like the two most powerful force users in the galaxy. And it just that for whom the force is just no, that's just nature. And this mm-hmm. lasers never hit us. I don't know why. It's like I, like as far as you know, and like when Luke is like, yeah, I, I bullseye womp rats, and they're not more than a meter. It's like, dude, what are you talking about? Do you know how far away that is in a meter? And it's that's a hard shot to make. Mm-hmm. But he's like, no, man, you just like you feel it, and it's just like, boo. <laughs> Well, you know, no, he just, I don't know if he killed animals for fun, but you know, womp rats, you got to keep the womp rat population under control. Let's, let's just be clear. And also they're good eating. So, 
I'm assuming. I don't know. I've never eaten Womperat. Um, it sounds terrible. What? It sounds terrible. It sounds terrible, but just because it sounds to you know, and that's sort of the, one of those things, you know, every so often they'll rebrand like a fish from like, you know, oh no, that's chili and bee, sea bass. That's not, that's not toothfish, um, <laughs> which is like what chili and sea bass used to be called. And then someone said, no, I was like, oh yeah, there's, we've got too many of these dang toothfishes. Well, where are we catching? Well, off the coast of Chile. So let's call them Chilean sea bass. <laughs> so, ooh, Chilean sea bass, that sounds delicious. <laughs> so, like real Tatooine, Tatooine water rodents or water, water, water leapers. Right. There you go. Don't call them a womp rat, call it a Tatooine water leaper. And, ooh, delightful. <laughs> <laughs> An aquatic marmot. Yes, exactly. Well, because they find the water. That's what they do. Oh, aquatic marmot. Tatooine marmot. There we go. Mmm, mm, delicious. <laughs> we do see, we, we see those things do get eaten a lot. Because you see, and what's weird is that they, we see them also laughing and like kept as pets, but mm. also eaten. And it's like, you know, you wonder like how sentient are they? And is it, is it really a, is there a line we're crossing? You're eating these creatures. Oh, people say guinea pigs are delicious and they keep those as pets. Yeah, but guinea pigs, you never you never wonder about the inner life of a guinea pig. Oh, fair enough. Well, I guess maybe some people do. And in fact, I guess arguably the Wonder Pets is all about the inner life of guinea pigs and <laughs> other other such animals. Duckies and, and, and uh what was it? Was it the other one a frog in the Wonder Pets? I forget. Anyway, moving right along. Um yeah, I I do like um I like we do get to see the the natives coming up, you know. Yeah, I thought it was really really funny cuz like the old man who was like the head of the native clan had just such an air of arrogance and bravado about him like like he knew something like we're going to prevail. Like we've been yeah. fighting these lands for thousands of years. You think you're the first empire that's shown up here trying to tell us this? We don't have to do anything. We're just going to walk calmly and and the universe or whatever is at play will take care of you. And then, like, you know, like, normally you would look at this guy going, ah, oh, this poor guy, he's about to get stomped out and he doesn't even know it. Look at them snickering and sneering up from their tower going, oh, we're about to wipe these people out. It's the last time they're going to get to do their little ceremony. And that just through chance or whatever, they get to watch, uh, you know, uh, their strength crumble and their infrastructure crumble and them start to panic. And it's, 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 it's kind of a, a, a nice thing to see. Yeah. You know, it's, um, another character who uh, I think it's the first time we we're meeting him is actually, I guess, the commandant of the fortress. Of the what? Who is the, oh, com- oh, the commandant. The and with, with the beard? Yeah. The old guy. The old guy. Yeah. Yeah. The old guy. And, um, because we also see that he's got the visitor from Coruscant, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I I I I, I love the <laughs> joke about oh my boat has been stored improperly; it seems to have contracted. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's that's what happened, friend. That's what happened. Um, uh, you know, I feel for the guy. And his wife and his kid, because they are all just trying to get by in this world. Hmm. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you know, he's a space Nazi. So you can only have so much empathy for the guy. And especially with his haughtiness and his like, oh, of course, what we did was we put all the beer stands along the path up. So, you know, what starts as, as a thousand, you know, as, as, you know, 5,000 winds up as, you know, a few hundred. And, you know, because they, they, you know, but then again, I'm sure that there's a lot of people for whom going to the eye, it's a great thing. And that arguably you can see the eye all over the place. You don't have to go to the valley, but, you know, and so, you know, probably there's probably a lot of secular people on, uh, Eldani who are like, yeah, it's cool. But, um, you know, everyone's excited, excited for it. And we get to see the whole ritual. Um, the whole trading of pelts, hmm. which I found interesting because it didn't even seem like there was much about it. Because we even see the guy actually throw the pelts he gets on the fire. 
Yeah. Um, well, maybe I thought it was like because they were their pelts. He enjoyed mm-hmm. the, the fire. That maybe it is a custom of theirs that they do. But since yeah. from you, I have no respect for this. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. You know. Um. Yeah. It. It. Uh, <laughs> although it does remind me of that one Batman episode where they're trying to, you know, keep the lease from Gotham from going back to the Native Americans. Oh, and they have to give. Give the beaver pelts. It's it's from Batman sixty six, and it's basically the idea is that the top families of Gotham have to continually do this ritual where they give these beaver pelts to the last remaining native in Gotham, and he's like, you know, my my ancestors made a lousy deal. That's but, you know, but the idea is if they don't do it, then legally it all reverts back to him, and all of Gotham City goes back to the Native Americans. Wouldn't that have been fun if they just like made it a lease, not a, not a sale, you know? Hmm. <sighs> yeah. Complex, uh, complex real estate transactions, unfortunately, was not always the, the nature of early, early settler deals with Indians, um, and Native Americans. Right. Sorry. Okay. Moving right along. Um, but yeah. We, 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 we see them earlier training. We see them getting ready. We see them in their uniforms. We see them walking in, blending in. You know, they make the thing if anyone asks if you're from the garrison, you say you're from, uh, the province. If you're from the province, you say you're from the garrison. You know, like, whatever you do, you say you're from the other place. Wherever they're from, you're from the other place. That's why they haven't seen you. You're a new transfer. And they walk in and they get there. And that is, to me, that is the most beautiful thing is just having an inside man, hmm. having a stormtrooper on your team who tells you, here is how you move. Here is how you do this. This is how you don't look out of place. Here is how you blend in. And it is beautiful in the way they blend in. And when they actually pull the heist, man, they just pull it. And, you know, they kill the one guy, which is, the guy from Coruscant, and that's good because he's like the one guy that really doesn't matter, right? You know, and they don't have to kill the kid, which is good because um, yeah. if they did kill the kid, although you know within it there is that whole thought in your mind, like would they have killed the kid, the kid who really does not want to wear the Imperial Guard? Right. He does, and, and that's understandable. Even if he, even if he has no real heavy feeling about the Empire or the Rebellion. It's like his dad is the one always doing the Empire, so I don't want to do that. You know? Um, what are you going to, like, watch some, have some kid watch his father be murdered and then say, hey, go on. You know, we'll <laughs> see in a couple of years, you know? Well, you know what? I'll be t- uh, interested, and I'll tell you this, there's lots of stories of people who join the ex- Empire expressly because the Rebellion killed someone they loved. That, you know, that the rebellion had to take lives too. And that is what makes it all a bit more complex. Yeah. Hi, Tristan. Uh, what do you want to tell me? But say it loudly so the audience can hear. Okay, then tell me after the show. If it's not for the show, don't tell me during the show. Because we're doing a show. That's how you know. Okay, what is important to tell me? Okay, you made two sandwiches. One is going to go for your friend. Good to know. Thank you for making the sandwiches. That's good. I don't have to make lunch tomorrow. I'm very happy. Um, <laughs> what kind of sandwich are you getting? Yes. Uh, well, mom's going to make pen sandwiches, so we're okay. Um, moving right along. Um, they get in. They start. And what happened? Did we stop? It, I think it's okay. 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 Um, but yeah, so they're in there and they start, they start moving. And it is every work they have the the one they have the commandant doing the work too. You got to work, and uh, as it turns out, he was not used to physical labor. Um, and we do get a whole thing because, uh, and this is what is also interesting in this is that one thing they didn't count on was people realizing that the comms were down, hmm. and them realizing that oh man, you know they can still get to the. Because they left the one channel open, which is the channel to the airbase, uh, because they had to do something with the airbase to get the permission locks un- un- undone. But as a result, that also lets them call in 
the uh, call in the what do you call it the um, the 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 airstrike later, mm. and also has them start looking for what's going on. And when they get there, you know, they, they try to talk themselves out of it, but then of course the old guy has a heart attack, and you know that's when things go crazy. My favorite they f- is is when um, when the inside guy tries to tell the soldiers that come to investigate, like what's going on here. He's like, "You get out of here! No, th- this is a it's a super secret mission. No, 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 it's super duper secret. You wouldn't. Yeah. It's just so hilarious to me that it, and like, what else are you gonna do? I guess, but it's just hilarious. Exactly. Well, yeah. Cause I, the, there's there is a chance the guys go. It's like you roll your charisma. Say, like, this is, yeah. how dare you be here? This is a sealed off area. This is a highly important imper- imperial mission to move <laughs> to move these credits so they're not stolen. Get out of here before you tip off the <laughs> the rebels. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I, he I, I rolled probably, it. I probably would have that twenty man and say, so, well, okay, sorry, sir. <laughs> Yeah, that, that would have been a better way to go. We've heard of a uh, news of an impending attack. We're trying to get this out of here. Uh, and I would have sent the dude on like a, on a fool's mission to get him out of the way. Instead of saying, you have to go, you shouldn't be seeing this. Uh, I like yeah, your yeah. explanation better. And then giving him a mission saying, hey, go, go make sure those doors are opened. We're going to escape that way. Go, you know. Yeah. Anyway, but they do, they do get a good amount of the money loaded in, uh, 80 million credits, they say. Um, which is good. Uh, but they have to, you know, the firefight starts. They have to make a run for it. And they left the hover lift on. Hmm. And no one fastened their seatbelts before they went. They just went. People went flying. And that hover lift laden with a lot of credits goes and hits our poor Sweet potato, um, our poet, the very heart of the revolution, the heart of the rebellion. And, uh, he can't feel his legs, mm. but he's alive. And you know, man, this is gets us to, well, okay. Well, we're going to get to that in a minute because, uh, there is so much, there's so much that happens in this next bit. Um, because, you know, casting, he's flying, but he doesn't know where to go. He needs some, things and that's what sweet potato is supposed to do uh so they basically <laughs> pump him full of uh cortisone and you know cortisone and adrenaline and just you know they give him a med spike and bring him over and he but he does it man he does his job and that is fudging impressing where he's like no 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 go up now go down now do this now do that and drives the TIE fighter right into whatever this whole meteor shower thing is. It's not really a meteor shower, but like, you know, crystalline dust thing. Yeah. Basically it's amazing. And I gotta imagine that's a quite the show for the for the for the kids at home. You know, down on the ground. Just like, yeah, look, look. Look at the battle that rages before us. They think they're right, taking it. Right. Our enemies are going to bite the dust. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. And for what it's worth, the guy from Coruscant bites the dust. The Commandant bites the dust. A bunch of TIE fighters bite the dust. There's a lot of dust biting going on here. Um, but they do get up and they do get out. And in that moment, uh, you know, they have to decide what are they going to do? Are they going to go to the rendezvous point or do they go to the doctor that they did plan in as a contingency? And this is where, because this is where the other criminal guy really, he gives me pause because on some level, he's fighting for his friend. He's fighting for Sweet Potato. But the other side, for what happens later, you're like, was that just his way to to cause problems? Can we pause for one second? So just restart it. And the thing is, is like, you know, the, the criminal guy, he's berating the leader about how she just wants him to die. She doesn't want him to go. And 
on one level, you can feel for that. That sweet potato, maybe sweet potato can be safe. Maybe if they go to this doctor. Because for what it's worth, man, what? He's got a broken spine? Yeah, even Have if you seen? There, he could be all right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the way they replace people with robot parts, it seemed like that's a reasonable thing, you know? Yeah. Heck, how long was freaking, what's her name, dead in the desert before um, Boba Fett took her to oh. the uh, robot uh, replacement guy, you know? Fennec. <laughs> Fennec, yeah, Fennec Shand, thank you. How long was Fennec Shand dead yeah. before? So it's like, you know, it was like, ah, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he's, he's only mostly dead. Right, they gave still a little bit uh, alive. Bionic liver, I think, right or something. Exactly, you know. Yeah, just gotta replace. Just gotta replace those middle parts with some other parts. That yeah. solves the problem. We'll leave uh, a nice little glass viewing case so you can see all our beautiful work. <laughs> yeah. Although maybe he's not a modder, so that might be uh, that they were a doctor. They they just work with flesh. They don't mm. put in the parts, you know. Right. 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 So, like, maybe, maybe, you know, say, yeah, if I was a modder, yeah, I'd have the parts for him, but I don't have the parts here. You know, that's the problem is I don't have the parts. Which is why you really want a modder, not a whatever. Um, <clears throat> moving right along. Um, moving right along, we go to, uh, we go to a scene with Andor and the criminal guy outside. And I did not know how to read this scene because he's basically like, look, you can, you and me, we can split this take and we can go and leave them here because I'm only in this for the money. I was only always in this for the money. I don't have a brother, but it's 80 million. I can't fly this thing, but you can. We can split it and we can leave them. And Andor makes the choice to shoot the guy. And games win stupid prizes. I mean, part yeah. of it, if you want to make the argument that, oh, you know, that's the kind of person he was. He was just testing him to see if you were. But, bro, we've already done the mission. The time for testing and whatever is is gone now. If you still want to play like a, a game of your Ashton Kutcher and I'm on punk, you might get shot. Yeah. And that's a fair cop. And that's the thing. It's like it, it does make me like re-question everything that we knew about the guy. And that's mm. that's weird to me because we built who he was, but then you can, and that's the thing is like, you can go back and see, oh my gosh, it was all a lie. Everything was a lie. He was always aware of what he was doing and was just making his plans. And that is rough. And then, then what I think is the most interesting is the final heel turn by Andor at the end. It's not a heel turn. He just says, look, I'm not going to, fly you to wherever you can get yourself to where you're going uh you have the money i just want my i want the money i was promised here's the freaking trinket back um give me my cut i'm i'll buy your old wreck out of the back um let me leave and you guys are good and i will do what i need to do because i was this was always my plan mm -hmm. you know i never said i was here for the rebellion yeah, and one of y'all already tried to screw the whole thing up. I don't trust any of you anymore. Yeah. I'm smart enough to know that I'm going to get mine and get out of Dodge uh, before this thing gets any more sideways. Yeah, and, you know, to be fair, I think that was a good bet, you know? Mm -hmm. It's 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 hard, man. It, it's It's hard being this guy in this world, you know, is that... You know, in this world, he is he is trying to do his best to live, to deal with the whole thing. He tries to make his money, gets pulled into this thing where everyone's going to say, "Oh no, this is the this is the greater cause." But I do think it's important that he has they give him the manifesto mm. that sweet potato lives on through his manifesto and. I wonder if that's going to be like a thing that influences him. I think that he's going to influence the rebellion in general. I think those writings are going to get mythologized. His sacrifice and his actions will get mythologized and he will be a banner uh, for the yeah. whole rebellion, not just a mascot for this ragtag group of freedom. Uh, uh, 
assuming he actually could write as well as he says. You know? <laughs> but it felt like like they were giving that little ledger or that little diary some important. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can absolutely see that. Uh, any final thoughts on tonight's episode, Maz? Uh, it really really cool. I love uh how they're taking their time with it and um the 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 spectacular show in the sky that we were promised we actually did get that was really quite cool and impressive mm-hmm. to watch. Um, super. super yeah. Cool. You know, I was I'm surprised this is like the sixth episode. Like I I feel like we're almost halfway. We're we're more than halfway through, and I didn't even realize we'd done that many already. Um, so that's shocking. Um, yeah. and, uh, if you were likewise shocked and you want to tell us about how shocked you were, uh, you can write to us here at capes and lunatics at gmail.com. That's capes and lunatics, all spelled out, all one word at gmail.com. And of course, call us at 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. Do you want to be on the air? Well, you can leave us a voicemail message and we will play it for all the people to hear. So your opinions will be heard. You matter. And because we matter and everyone in the whole Capes and Lunatics family matters, go down to Linktree, L-A-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. Go there, uh, click on our link, see all the shows that we have, buy some wonderful merch, become a Patreon, um, or just give us money random- randomly because you know what? We like you guys and maybe you like us and you want us to keep this going. So, you know, every little bit helps. You know, we don't make money off of this, but we do make uh, content and hopefully content you love. So looking forward to hearing from you all. Uh, in the meantime, Maz, if people just want to reach out to you individually, how can they do so? Oh, they can email me at mazmanzor at gmail.com or find me on Facebook under Maz Manzor. That's M-O-Z-Z-M-A-N-Z-O-O-R. And of course, you can always write to me in that old fashioned email way that our mothers and fathers once did at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word at gmail.com. And follow me on the Twitter. Yes, it's still there at Charlie Esser. That's C H A R L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing. All right. Yes. You lovely landlubbers. You have come to us. You've come with us to the end of another exciting adventure on the briny main that is the internet. Come again next week as we once again sail full stream ahead. Arrgh!